Retro Maniacs. Well, good news. The Hot Wheels Elite DeLorean is in Stony Creek. It'll be here anytime. But in the meantime, we're bored. We want to do something in the meantime, right? We want to unbox something. I just got out of the shower. My goatee's just a friggin' look at that. Eh? Out of the shower, it's just a rat's nest. <laughs> eh? But uh, <laughs> I look like Dennis Cage. <laughs> look at that, uh, Glenn. Mm -hmm. I just had it and it looked like Dennis Cage, the guy from my classic car. But it didn't, it just mm -hmm. stayed like that for a second. Yeah. But uh, anyway, let's go downstairs and see what we could box. We're going to go down to the bowels of the Cowie Diecast Museum. I'll take you guys with me because it's been friggin' spooky down there lately. Oh, yeah, we can't turn the light on until we get down to the bottom. So glad you guys are with me because this is pretty spooky stuff. Normally I would be scared cropless coming down here alone in the dark. Let me turn a light on here. Ah! This episode of Crack It with Retro Collectibles is sponsored by and in association with the Taui Diecast Museum. Killing the value on collectibles since 2019. Okay guys, you know what we're unboxing by the thumbnail, I'm sure. Retro Maniacs. Well, good news. The Hot Wheels Elite DeLorean is in Stony Creek. It'll be here anytime. But in the meantime, we're bored. We want to do something in the meantime, right? We want to unbox something. I just got out of the shower. My goatee's just a friggin' look at that, eh? Out of the shower, it's just a rat's nest. <laughs> Eh? But uh, <laughs> I look like Dennis Cage. <laughs> look at that, uh, Glenn. Mm -hmm. I just had it and it looked like Dennis Cage, the guy from my classic car. But it didn't, it mm -hmm. just stayed like that for a second. Yeah. But uh, anyway, let's go downstairs and see what we could box. We're going to go down to the bowels of the Cowie Diecast Museum. I'll take you guys with me because it's been friggin' spooky down there lately. Oh yeah, we can't turn the light on until we get down to the bottom, so glad you guys are with me because this is pretty spooky stuff. Ooh. Normally I would be scared cropless coming down here alone in the dark. Let me turn a light on here. This episode of Crack It with Retro Collectibles is sponsored by and in association with the Cowie Diecast Museum. Killing the value on collectibles since 2019. Okay guys, you know what we're unboxing by the thumbnail, I'm sure. So Retro Maniacs, all joking aside, um, we were originally going to do this guy. It's one that I like the look of that uh, Dave got from Amazon a while back. I seen it and liked it and he was like, ooh, I like that too. I was looking at that as well. Um, it's an armor all charger. It looks like kind of like Dom's charger, but it's got an armor all paint job. It's the artisan again, but then I thought, you know what? We just did an artisan charger. Uh, then I remembered this one here. Now, this is one that Glenn has been asking me to unbox for a couple months. And I've been saying, you know what, buddy? We've done a lot of Cobras, blah, blah, blah. But there's a reason I want to do this. Number one, I don't recognize the box. I did not recognize the maker. There's no maker visible on the outer box, okay? So it piqued my interest because a lot of these unknown older ones lately, I, we've been discovering have been pretty good. And then I look closely at the back. Made by Yat Ming Industrial. Yat Ming, a.k.a. Road Legends. Remember the surprise we got with the Road Legends Yellow Beetle? 
So when I read it was Yat Ming, I scrapped the Armor All Charger. Now if the gentleman's watching that watched the video with the uh, Lion Green Charger, I know you don't like loud colors. I was going to do this charger for you tonight, actually, since it's not a loud color. Uh, but we just did a charger, so I'm going to do that in the next video or two for you, okay? <coughs> We're going to do it for sure, because it's got to be done. But this is just to break it up a little bit. It's the uh, Yat Ming. I'm curious what else these guys have done, because so far, from what I've seen, excellent detail. But they're in boxes that kind of make you think they're crappy, you know? So I want to have a close look at this, and looking at it through the box... It actually looks excellent, like the seats and everything. Like before when Gwen was coming to me when I didn't know anything about this company, I wasn't giving it a chance to be honest with you. And now we're gonna do her up. So we're gonna take this out and I'm gonna show you at the end of the video, a display case you can use acrylic for these Cobras that we discovered tonight fits them perfectly. And it looks like a custom made case. Max, you're going to like this one. I don't know, you probably don't collect Cobras, but you're going to like the idea of it. We just stumbled on it today. Um, and it'll make storing them a little bit cheaper too than the, than the regular one of 18 scales. So we'll get into unboxing this guy. Now, as we're recording this, guys, this is Sunday night, Easter Sunday. Uh, video dropped is dropping... Should be dropping soon, actually, at 1 a.m. Monday morning. I believe it's the Blue Mustang. And um, tomorrow, the DeLorean should be in. Uh, tomorrow or Tuesday, the latest. But I'm thinking tomorrow I'm getting a call to pick it up at the post office. Because it's already at the local <laughs> delivery center in Stony Creek, according to the tracking. So, and... The thing for my iPhone that I ordered way after the uh, Hot Wheels Super Elite DeLorean, that's also at a local delivery center. So I've been getting, they've been, the phone's been letting me put up 720p videos lately, but I've been really having to scrub it to get to do that. So I'll be happy to get this other one or this thing so I can scrub my phone, put it, keep just my editing stuff only on my phone. And then that way it's so much easier and streamlined. And... Okay, so this is first time unboxing a traditional Yat Ming that's not a Road Legends or anything with this box. I am unfamiliar with this base, so we are going to be careful. That is not a regular base at all. Look at that. Look at the top. Glenn, look at this. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be careful with that. Mm -hmm. I, we've never encountered that yet. Looks good. It look it, like it looks really good with the blue with the but we've never encountered it. It's new to us, so anything like that, we're gonna be careful. And on comes our light since we're unboxing the car now. Um I noticed this light gobbles those dollar store rechargeables, so I'm gonna be sending away to get double A rechargeables from Amazon. All the ones we got before were triple A's. Uh, but this these lights the ones at the dollar store, I think, are meant for low usage devices, um, like remotes, stuff like that. And this light here is pretty darn bright on the third setting. So I think it gobbles through lights. Like I got two videos and then I got to recharge them. So I'm going to be getting a little bit better lights. Uh, it's easy enough to take out, it looks like, just four screws and... I hope we're gonna have an easy time lining it up when it goes back in the box. But we're gonna be putting it in a display case and we're gonna show you a little bit of a cheaper way to protect Cobras, because they're a small body, small chassis. Some of you guys might already be figuring out what I'm talking about, but I'm gonna show you and it looks good too. Really good. And don't mind me if you see my pants, guys. It's my Knight Rider pajamas. Actually, they're not pajamas. I wear them out. I'm in Hamilton. It's part of the part of the attire. That's what they do in the states too. 
you know what, for years and years and years, and not so much anymore, but people were doing that in Hamilton, wearing pajama bottoms everywhere, and you would see them usually in, like, uh, kind of like ghetto areas where I used to live, usually. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it was definitely a fad in the early to mid-2000s. Probably mid mid two thousands, I'd say. Mid to late. Okay, so all four screws are out. These weird little black things are out. And what else we got? Oh, it's got another base, a second base. So we're gonna have to be keep all these parts good. It's weird. There's no number in the circle on the hood. Yeah, there's no number. Maybe uh, I don't know. I wonder if there's supposed to be a number. Um, you could look it up on uh, Google Yat Ming Cobra, maybe, or Yat Ming 118 Cobra, and you'll get a bunch of pictures and see if it's an error. Maybe it is. Mm -hmm. That's something, if you wanted to put a number on it, you could get a decal from eBay and put a number on it. Mm -hmm. That would be pretty easy to do. But yeah, this is definitely all the cars I've unboxed, guys. I've never unboxed a base like, or a car with a base like this. I'll tell you, though, look at those rims with the center caps. Like, that's what I mean. I started noticing it after I noticed who made it. Like, I started looking closer. And I said, I don't think this is what I thought it was, which is a crappy quality car. Oh, the wheels feel good on it. Okay, so... We're gonna have to de-strap this totally. Um, first thing we're gonna do, actually, you know what, we'll de-strap it first, then we'll look for paint rash. I don't think it has any of that oil on it, but if it does, we gotta get it off, because we can't look for paint rash properly and see the paint finish with that oil on it, because it'll look all gloopy. Okay, so de-strapping this guy. But yeah, I'm liking the looks of the uh, tires, the wheels on it, definitely. It feels good. Um, it's not super heavy. Like the Exoto one that Glenn has weighs a ton. Like it weighs the size of a like a regular one of 18 car, like a Super B, you know what I mean? Like it's heavy for its size. But we're going to put this beside the Exoto for craps and giggles. But, um, okay, first thing we're going to do, guys, paint rash. Paint is good. Paint is good. What I thought was paint rash at first, it was just like little metallic in the paint. Uh, but paint is good. No paint rash. No paint rash, Gwen. That's good. Here's the plate on the back. So we're gonna start with the bottom. Um, average details on the bottom kind of reminds me of a Maisto, but the other Road Legends cars, the bottom didn't have blow away details either. It was the rest of them that were like, woo, that's nice. So we're gonna start with the trunk. Does the trunk open? Trunk opens. Now, I'm going to show you the difference between an Exoto, which is major money Cobra, and this guy. And it's not that this guy is not nice, because it is, but I'm going to show you the difference. Like, the trunk looks good on this, right, guys? The Exoto, it's all sheet metal in the trunk, like the actual car would have. It's pretty impressive. But yeah, this is very nice, too. Okay, so we'll start, we'll leave the engine for last like we usually do. Oh, they made a f major mistake, Glenn. Oh, yeah? Look at the inside of the doors. Oh, there's no door. Major, major error here, guys. It, it was going good until this. You know the silver screen machine, Daisy's satellite that we unboxed? 
to how they forgot to put the interior panels in the back of the car. Look at the interior door. That's not supposed to be like that. They forgot to put the door panels on, guys. And this is out of the box, cracked. That's not that's not your fault, Glenn. There's nothing you mm -hmm. can do about it. Nope. But that is a first on Retro Collectibles Crack It. And yet, Ming, I'm... Wow. Like, I am shocked with this. I can't believe it. Like, that is simply an employee forgot to do that, Glenn. Yep. On a Friday, racing to leave, or on a Monday. And... Yeah, and then I don't know how that got by quality, but that is definitely not right. Like, they would not... They would not put the gear shift, everything else in there and leave the door panels, guys. Like, that's... Okay, anyway, so the, da the dash cluster looks good. It does appear to be sticker. It is sticker, but it's sticker that you could clearly see. And I would rather there be sticker than nothing at all. The, the uh, steering wheel looks like a nice wood grain wheel. And of course, we're going to get a better look up on the look seat. Ah, there you go, guys. Look at that. And we're going to get a better look up on the look seat set. But it's got beautiful details, even that glove box. I cannot believe they did not put into... Like, that's a first. Other than Daisy's Charger and or Daisy's Satellite. And that was an Auto World Silver Screen Machines mistake. Um... Wheels turn with the steering wheel. They turn nicely, although they do feel loose, but they turn nicely. A um, little bit choppy, actually. Yeah, it is actually a bit choppy, the steering, but they do, they're not getting stuck or anything, which is good. Okay, so let's look under the hood, guys. The interior looked great. Like, the seats looked like actual leather, even. Like, it looked like the seats in Glenn's uh, 1 at 12th, like his more expensive one. And then they leave the door panels. Oh, what, what, are they, what now? Are they going to forget the engine? Oh, no. Engine looks good. Now, it's not like the Exoto. I would say this is like an entry-level model. Um, it's not horrible. But I'm very, like, low grade because of the door panels. Like, I don't even know if I'm going to grade this now. Um, but the good thing is, sitting in a, the plastic display for Glenn, it's not going to look bad because you're not going to notice that, thankfully. Um, but I cannot believe they forgot that. Um, everything else looks good. And we're going to go up on the look see set. Have a good look at it. I like the wheels. Those are awesome. Um, we're going to have a good go around to this thing. And then I'm going to show you the Exoto for those that haven't seen it. We're going to compare this, which is like, a, I would say, an entry level to a real, like, out of Retro's League model. For those who haven't seen it yet, I'll do a side by side with that. My regulars, you've seen the Exoto Cobra, the beautiful black one. But uh, I'll do a side-by-side -side of this. Yeah, Ming. They would have got a, uh, probably a 6.5 or a 7 if they had the door panels in. Because it's for what you would have paid for it, it's, mm -hmm. it, it's decent. It reminds me of maybe a step up from Maisto. If they had the door panels. But, nope. But okay, guys, let's go look at this a little bit closer here. So a close look at this, guys. It doesn't look bad sitting there. Like, I'm really liking the wheels on it. But when, when you feel it and stuff like that, you kind of feel... Uh... Well, I'll show you in a minute. Give you a look from over the top. The seats look great. They look like the Cobra seats in a more expensive Cobra. Like that's what one of the things that made me think we were in for a real good one. But I'm not going to retro score this, guys, because it's bad enough that Glenn got a car without in 
tear your door panels. I'm not gonna add insult to injury. The dashboard, the sticker looks good. Like it looks, it does not look bad, guys. The details on it. The engine's not horrible. I've definitely seen worse and more expensive cars. You want to see what is horrible though? So it even looks good from the front guys. You could see the fan through the grill, like the details are nice on it, but check this out. It ain't meant to roll. Ladies and gents, that is definitely a self shit, uh, shelf sitter. Like, see, it looks good. Looks good sitting there. It's one of those things that it's, uh, it looks good till you get close, you know what I'm saying? Till you see the missing panels and. So, my verdict on Yat Ming, guys, definitely hit or miss. Um,. If you consider buying one, definitely give it a closer look. Uh, because this looked excellent in the box. Like, look at those wheels. Like, it, it looked great in the box. I was looking at the red fire extinguisher inside. Like, I was going, wow, that's got good details. And it does look good sitting on the shelf. But I'm going to show you a real expensive one in a second. But first, so I told you guys that... I stumbled on an idea for these Cobras, for acrylic storage for them. Glenn and Dave go over to Hobby Lobby and they get the acrylic display cases, okay? Um, yeah, so they go get the acrylic display cases. They get one of 12 scale for our really big stuff. They get one of 18 scale, but they also get one of 24 scale. We were putting the expensive stuff into acrylics today and I looked at the Cobra and I said, a 118 is going to look too big. I wonder if that will fit in a smaller one of 24. Wouldn't that be awesome? Because it'll be less expensive too, even though it's a full size 118 car. Check this out. It's like it's meant for it. It's like it's a custom made display case. Like it's not, uh, we have putty under the wheels, so it's not rolling around. But the one of 24 is perfect for a Cobra. And it's not just that ex Exoto Cobra. Check this. Not just the Exoto Cobra fits in those. And speaking of the Exoto, let's have a side-by-side -side of these two here. Here's a better look, guys. Look how that fits in that case. That's like how my Bigfoot fits in its uh, acrylic case. Not banging the sides, anything. Just perfect. You could fit a playing card in there between it. But let's compare. Now, here we go, guys. This is not a shootout either because we know that the Exoto, the black one, would smoke it. Um, but check this out. Look at the difference in the interiors. Actually, hold on. I'll show you something that's more obvious. That engine. Okay. That engine. That interior. This interior. The Exoto has real leather seats. But just the most obvious difference is in the engine bay. Like that's big quality difference there, but. Good die cast isn't cheap and cheap die cast isn't good. And that you see it right there. Okay, guys, just to clarify the last statement I made to you as well about uh, good die cast isn't cheap and cheap die cast isn't good. That's not referring to deals. Like, that doesn't mean you cannot absolutely get a $100 auto art bullet one day if you're looking hard enough on Marketplace. I don't mean deals. I mean quality. Like, that. you know what I'm saying. 
Um, sometimes you'll get a really high quality one for cheap on Marketplace and it's because the person just doesn't know or they want to let it go for what they paid for it. They don't tack appreciation on. It's happened to me several times. Uh, but anyway, that is a good example of the difference. I could, I'm still blown away with the door panels. Like I was going into that with a total, it looked great in the box. It looked excellent in the box. In the box, you can't see those door panels. Um, in the little display case we're going to put it in, you're not really going to see them either, thankfully, unless you're right up there looking. But that's a pretty big thing to miss. And it was missed because they're not going to add the other little features and then forget the door panels. So Yat Ming is hit or miss. The Beetle was excellent. The Barracuda was plain, but it had awesome build quality and looks like it'll be around for another hundred years. Like it's put together really well, doors open really well, everything rolls really well. And then this Cobra, it doesn't roll well, missing door panels. So it's definitely hit or miss. Maybe it's from different periods in the company, different years, different people might have owned it, who knows, but... The, the Yat Ming, if you go to buy one, definitely look close before you buy it. Because you don't want to get it home after you pay it and notice it doesn't have door panels. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, please like, subscribe, and share. Hit the like button for me. Subscribe and share. And as always, guys, happy hunting. And don't let Diddy get you.